I'm a little confused. Let me rerun the tape for a moment. Um, I asked you before we got on air if you had taken any Greek or Hebrew, and you basically said no. Now, you have taken Greek someplace? I, I've taken Greek on the University of the Air. I listen a lot to uh, <laughs> theologians and expositors on Christian radio, and I've learned quite a good deal of Greek. Well, that's the worst place to learn it, I think, personally. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't... I wouldn't want to learn it there, let me tell you don't, that. Don't tell John Stewart that, because I... I <laughs> tell John Stewart that. That would be bad news. But then I won't quibble with you about the Greek tense. The issue comes back to this. Mormon theology teaches that there are many, 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 many gods, and their followers through various temple things can be exalted to become one of them. You've admitted this. Yes, I've but... quoted from your scriptures. I want you to show me from Mormon scripture and from Mormon authorities a clear-cut statement which says, we do not believe that people become gods. We only believe that there's one all eternity, not one just for us on this planet, and each planet has their own honcho. Well, let me... Show me something to prove what you're saying. I've given you five, six, seven references. Show me something that backs up that you say you, you're speaking for Mormon theology. Prove it. Show me from your church authorities what you're saying is their position. I'll do better than that. I'll show you from the Bible. Yeah, see, would that's that, slippery that help you? That's a lawyer. No, that will not help me. Oh, because dear. we're discussing not the Bible, but Mormon theology. Oh, then, you see, you haven't gotten the point that I was trying to make at the very beginning. The Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants is Mormon theology. Well, show Those me from Doctrine are, and Covenants. Show me from uh, you do Pearl of Great Prize. You, do not accept, you don't accept the, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Prize. But scripture. I still quote from them. Well, that's fine. And you believe in them, so quote them. <laughs> okay, here's what I'm going to have to do at this point. Since we're running out of time, I want to give you an opportunity, Richard, to uh, take about one minute to make some closing remarks, and then I'll afford you the same luxury, Dr. Morey. Richard, the show's yours. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. If you can turn that with me, we will find a very solid explanation of Mormon doctrine on this issue. It says, Beloved, now we are children of God, and uh, I could go on with numerous biblical scriptures indicating the literalness of that, as well as also a figurative meaning of it. But uh, we are children of God, and it has not appeared as yet what we shall be. We know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him just as he is. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself as he is pure. Now that is our goal, is to become like God. Now, I want to make this very, very clear because we, Quickly, it's you only a great have a misunderstanding. Of seconds. Mormons do not believe that we will become gods over our fellow brothers and sisters. With that, I'm going to have to hand it to Dr. Moore. He has less than a minute left, and you will Don't have opportunities to interact uh, after we go off the air. I have established from Mormon scripture, Mormon documents from their presidents, apostles, and prophets that Mormonism teaches polytheism. It teaches the deification of man, and it holds out the vain and illusionary hope that even Richard shall be God. But the God of the Bible said in Isaiah 44, there is no God before me, there is no God after me, there are no gods beside me, I and I only am God. When you turn to the New Testament, the Apostle Paul stated in 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 4, there is only one God. Richard, there is only one God, and you are not him. All right, uh, the historic doctrine of the Trinity, as I understand it explained in its fundamental facts, uh, as they are found in the scriptures in the Bible, is one which we would not have a problem with, as a matter of fact. It is where we get into a problem with the historical um, teachings of the Nicene Creed is when it departs from the literal language of the Bible and gets to into interpretation or explanation of that literal language. We do understand and accept the fact that there are three separate persons described in the Bible, primarily in the New Testament, as I'm sure... Uh, everyone understands, um, they are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and they are each designated or spoken of as God, but they are one, and that 
principle is made clear. We do not believe they are somehow put into one person. They are one, and they represent as one the united and perfect administration of the universe. And this we believe in. They are one, but there are three separate individuals. Now, if there's anything in the Bible that would contradict this viewpoint, I would like to see it. But if anybody wishes to suggest that they are not separate, there are a vast array of biblical quotations that will demonstrate clearly that they are separate. Well, I think it's important to point out that when Mormons say we believe in three personages, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're talking about three finite deities. And the Father has a body. He was an exalted man. Early Mormon writers said that this was Adam. For example, J President Fielding Smith, and I'm reading now from a book published by um, Bookcraft, and the introduction says that Joseph Fielding Smith was the leading gospel scholar and the greatest doctrinal teacher of this generation, referring to the Mormons. Matter of fact, it says that this book you will find authoritative finality, and they liken it to the oracles of God. So here we have someone who is viewed as perhaps the greatest doctrinal uh, teacher of Mormon theology, and this is in the 1950s, and he deals with what is called the Adam-God theory. And he quotes from Brigham Young, who said uh, in his quote that when our father Adam came into the Garden of Eden, he came into it with a celestial body and brought Eve, one of his wives, with him. He helped to make and organize this world. He is Michael, the archangel, the ancient of days, about whom holy men have written and spoken. He is our father and our God, and the only God with whom we have to do. And then President Smith must begin his tap dance in order to deal with the problem of the statement, the only God with whom we have to do. And he tries desperately to have all three gods plus others. But as in his discussion, he says, quote, all exalted men become gods. To believe that Adam is a god should not be strange to any person. And he goes on to say, and I quote again, Joseph Smith taught a plurality of gods and that man... And that man by obeying all the commandments of God and keeping the whole law will eventually reach the power and exaltation by which he also will become a God, end quote. Where in the Bible do you find a single statement in which men are told and women are told that they can become gods and goddesses by various temple rites and that it is held out to them to become deities? Where is this? You have yet to show us one passage. I, I will be happy to get into this in great detail, but since you are quoting from non-biblical sources that you... Uh, the greatest identified. teacher of a Mormon theology, ah. uh, President uh, Joseph Fielding, uh, Fielding Smith. Yes, I'm quoting from the, the greatest theologian of the church according to the introduction. Uh, uh, Joseph Fielding Smith was a very fine uh, thinker, um, and I'm not uh, disparaging him in any way. But I would like to also read to you from some of the great early Christian thinkers that I think you'll find interesting in this area. Were they members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? No. There was no Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on the earth in the former days. That would have been the Church of Jesus Christ of former day saints. Now, now you're switching the top. Now, as a lawyer, the topic is Mormon theology. I've just read from a Mormon theologian that was considered the greatest in his generation. I'm asking you for some Mormon sources, Mormon spokesmen, authorities. If you want to try some of the early church fathers, let's say Origen, I'm more than glad to prosecute Origen as a heretic and to agree with his expulsion from the early church. What but about the issue is not early church fathers. That is non sequitur. What about Athanasius? Would you prosecute him as a heretic? Uh, probably not, but <laughs> Athanasius is not the one that's the issue. The issue is Mormon theology. Okay, well, Athanasius was teaching Mormon theology, but let's not uh, go into that. He mentioned at this point. men becoming gods through temple ceremonies and. Oh, where, do you, where do you get the idea that men become gods through temple ceremonies? Oh, well, my lands. Do I need. How did you. I, I will ask you. You told us at the uh, another show 
that you hope to become a god and your wife a goddess. Will you tell everyone what are the requirements for becoming a god in your Mormon religion? Okay. What I did will, you have to do? I, I will read to you from John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 3, because it explains it quite clearly. It gives what you, what you had to do to become a god in 1 John? It, does, it gives what every human being must do to become like God. Okay. There are directions there? Absolutely. Didn't you listen when I read it carefully? Well, I listened and I read. I didn't find any directions Certainly. for becoming a God. Oh, absolutely. Well, read it to me. In verse 3, it says, And yes. everyone, everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself as he is pure. Yes, a moral so you cleansing. Must, you must purify yourself as he is pure. Yes, that refers to the washing of the blood of Jesus. That's correct. But it doesn't say, become a God. It says to become like him. Do you not think he is a God? Is that the problem? Becoming like someone morally, taking on righteousness and holiness is one thing, but there's nothing in the text that says how to become a God in three easy lessons. Oh, but answer my question. What did you do in the temple in order for you to have the hope that you're going to be a god. What have you done? Why should I tell you that? Because the That's audience not, is listening. Well, and the audience... Can, and if you equivocate and you sneak around, they'll say, uh-oh, there goes those Mormons again. Well, perhaps they'll also say, though, there goes those uh, evangelicals again trying to get off the point. The point is how we become like God. And uh, my point is that the Bible clearly tells you how to become like God. You didn't you make read yourself anything. pure. It, you don't like make him. yourself you learn, pure. No, no, uh, I, I, you're right. We do not make ourselves pure. That's we, right. God, the Savior, makes us pure. But there are things that we do that are associated with how that happens. What do you do in order to purify yourself so that you can be exalted oh. according to Mormon teaching? That's a good question. Um, and for the answer to that, allow me to turn to Acts chapter 2. Mm -hmm. um, the, the words of... Uh, and now, again, I'm asking you for Mormon authority. Oh, this is the best there is. The best there is? The Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price are the Mormon authorities. Well, what would you think of the book Gospel Principles, which is presently the largest translation project of the Church of Jesus Christ? It's being published in multiple languages, and it even has a section on requirements to be exalted to be a god. Uh, these is that what are the it says? yes. These are the specific ordinances that you have to have to be exalted. One, you must be baptized to confirm a member of Church of Jesus Christ. Bob, um, two, you must receive the Holy Spirit. You won't give the people the requirements, so I will. No, Three. no, I was about to give you those requirements. Oh, great. but I was well, going go to ahead. give them to you from a more authoritative source. You're, from the, the Bible, of course, where it says you must have a temple endowment. I, I have hunted for a Mormon who would show me a verse that says temple endowment. Go for it. Show me that verse. No, I will not show you any verses in the Bible that talk about temple endowments. The you mean they're not in there? There are allusions to the temple ordinances in many places in the scriptures, in the Bible as well. Old there Testament temple or New Old Testament? Old Testament and New Testament. Would well, you show me in the Book of Mormon where it says temple endowment? No, I would not. The Can temple, you show me in Doctrine and Covenants where it says temple endowment no, in order to... No, of course I won't. You mean it's not in the standard Mormon-inspired scriptures, and yet it's a requirement of your church? I will read to you the requirements of my church for you to become like God. If you're interested, I'll read them to you from oh, a very authoritative, authoritative yes. source. All right, temple endowment. What we're talking about here is the same thing that the people, when they at the day of Pentecost, when they heard that... Um, uh, about Christ and believed in him asked Peter what we shall do what shall we do to become gods or to be saved what was their question to, uh, is there a difference oh yes I'm saved well but I ain't a god Richard uh, if you are truly saved some what do you expect to do in the next life after you're saved if you're saved if what I'm do you expect which life after you die what do you die? expect yes. I'm going into the presence of God that's very there good. to await the resurrection, then to return to this earth and to pursue a... I have a plan on writing a series of volumes of the history of philosophy, etc. I'm learning a, under Bach. I'll, I'll play those fuse. It may take a million years. But no, I plan to fulfill all of the talents and gifts that God has given me as his creature. 
I'm glad to hear that you understand that you will be able to progress in that manner. Now, but, you but no know, temple endowment needed. No, no. Uh, I don't need my marriage sealed in the temple for time and eternity. I'm still waiting for some scriptures for that one, Richard. I'd be happy to give you some scriptures on marriage for eternity. Oh, that from would be from Christ wonderful. Himself. Oh, great. Uh -huh. Where? Well, there. Are well, first the give me the temple endowment. You well, no, 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 you admit no, no, there's no, none in there. I am not, no scripture uh, for there that. Is, okay. The temple endowment is a sacred matter, which has throughout the scriptures been treated in a sacred manner, and is only alluded to in various areas. For example, I mean, just if you want an area of... Oh, uh, please, give it. me one of these illusions. I mean, I've been reading the Bible for 30 years and I never found one yet. Mm -hmm. I'll just tell you what an illusion to it is. You will not believe me no. because... Of Make course sure it's not an illusion. I want an illusion. We will fill your requirements. By the way, I thought you were very astute in the previous session to determine that I am not God. I think that was very... You plan on becoming perceptive. one. But well, I don't plan. I can live with you I, now. I do not plan you on hope. becoming your God, Bob. I guarantee you. Oh. I do not plan on becoming the God of any person living on this earth. You get your time. own planet, right? Well, let me ask you this now. Because this, this is a philosophical sort of area. You have parents, right? And you are required to honor them, right? One of the things that has fascinated me as I grow older, every day I look a little more like my father did when he was mature. Oi. And I think, what is happening to me? I am getting to be just like my father in every way. And the curse. Well, I, I don't say that. No, he was quite a bright man. But be that as it may, I am surprised to see this happen. And do I read in the uh, Ten Commandments, honor thy father and thy mother until you become like them? No, I don't read that. I will always honor my father and mother, even though I will genetically and un certainly become like them. And you do admit and that. And like, that is like the same, the same situation exists with my children. They will honor me as their father. Will they just worship as I honor you? Will you be worshipped when you get your own planet and you and your... Uh, you have any do other women sealed to you? Is it just the one goddess? Um, I had an uncle who was a Mormon, had four women all lined up for his planet uh, he'd have four different waterbeds, I think. Well, you have the one guy. I, I, I can't, bit. Frank. Between you and me, I frankly believe that um, that I will have my hands full with one. With the one. Well, she's a blessed uh, woman. By the but, way, you do you do admit on the air, of course, that you had not only a father god but a mother god. We it, believe in a heavenly father and a heavenly mother. And a heavenly Definitely. mother. And it's not yes. the Virgin Mary. Blessed be her name. No novenas or no rosaries. No. Who was this mother goddess? By the way, do you have a name for her? No, we don't. Oh, there's no cards you can give no. Mother's Day. No, the word, well, the word Elohim, in the, used in the plural, may conceivably, I don't know, it's a speculation on my part, I want to identify it clearly as such, may have referred to Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. After all, in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, when Elohim says, let us make man in our own image, the next is the male and female created to them. It suggests that the term Elohim implies a... A male, Heavenly Father, and a well, female, I would disagree. Heavenly Mother. This? Well, let's get back. You were going to show me a verse that about the temple endowment. And yeah, about I'm going to have to. Um, marriage is sealed in the temple for eternity. No, and, no. Oh. And you could become a god and a goddess. And, you know, you, right. you, you've outdone Shirley MacLaine, you know, and the no, New Agers. No, certainly not. Absolutely not. You mean they, they got a better deal than you? I mean, they're gods now. Uh, Remember, Shirley said, I'm God. And, well, of course, I looked at that water and said, start working, start I, walking, Shirley. Bob, I assure you that I am not a god now. No. If there was any question in your mind about that, I want to put that to rest at Well, this if point. you were a god, I don't think I would want to debate you. I mean, I'd get zapped. <laughs> no, I assure you, you wouldn't have any such problem for me. But one day you um, will get your diploma, and it will say God, uh, Richard, divinity, or whatever it is. Well, let me ask you this. Do you believe that you'll become like God? No, of course not. Then you don't believe John in First John chapter three verse two. Of that course, we will be like no. Him. Of course, I believe that. I want to give both of you just an opportunity to make whatever finishing points you want to make in this half of the broadcast. You have about a minute apiece, and uh, then we're going to start taking calls in the second half of the broadcast. All right. Let me read uh, very quickly from uh, John chapter ten because we don't have time to go into all the things that we have been uh, sort of jesting back and forth about. Let's get a little more serious. John ten thirty through thirty six. Um, it starts, I 
and the Father are one. We've discussed this before. The Jews, who, by the way, were not Trinitarians, uh, understood him clearly without any need to believe that these two were one person. He under they understood that what Christ was saying is he is exactly like the Father, and therefore a, uh, entitled to the same um, uh, treatment and the same respect and the same title as, the, as God the Father. Took up, uh, took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I showed you many good works from the Father, for which of them are you stoning me? And the Jews said, For a good work we stone you not, but for blasphemy, because you being a man, make yourself out to be God. They had the same problem that you do, Bob. They could not believe that a man, a finite being, could be God. And that is a basic problem that you have in your church. Christ then taught them the truth, which we believe. Robert, your response. The faith of Israel, given in every synagogue on Sabbath, the faith of Christianity, found in Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4, Shema Israel Adonai El Chinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, not two, not three, not four, not ten, not a million.